Hello and welcome to Cambridge for Kids History Podcasts with me, Matthew Brooks. I'm an archaeologist and I love history. And in these podcasts, I would like to share my knowledge and discoveries with you. This is episode four of the Rise of the Roman Empire series. The Romans were ingenious engineers and astonishing designers of transportation, including bridges, aqueducts, sewers, and 400,000 kilometres of roads, which all led to the capital, Rome. We will learn about the builders of these structures, military designs, and bandits and pirates who preyed on rich merchant ships. Way anchor! The ancient Romans journeyed from place to place by land and sea, and from its humble beginnings the Romans demonstrated an astonishing ability to build and engineer things that would help with all manner of transportation. They erected bridges across the river Tiber, aqueducts to supply Rome with water, and sewers to drain the streets, which kept the city healthy and free from disease. As they expanded before their conquest across the seas, the Romans linked the capital, Rome, with other people and cities in Italy that they had conquered by the system of legendary roads, so well designed that many still exist today. After Julius Caesar's civil war around 50 BC, which we will cover in a later episode, the conquered provinces were in disarray and needed rebuilding from the ground up. Julius Caesar's adopted son and first Roman emperor, Augustus, promised to improve the infrastructure and encourage trade and production. During the first two centuries AD, when the conquests were completed, wars gave way to peace and the legions became restless. But Augustus and his heirs kept their huge army busy with military creations. A great network of roads, bridges and waterways was built and connected to places like Gaul, where the fearsome Gauls that sacked Rome lived. These roads would establish trade between the two civilizations, and Gaul over time would be slowly influenced by Rome. Rome's military engineers were skilled surveyors who designed enormous developments in the provinces, and the soldiers would replace their swords for hammers and got to work. The soldiers would build a number of impressive structures, such as fortified encampments, bridges, archways, baths and temples. These structures would help the regional economies, just as Augustus planned, by providing work for local traders, craftsmen and farmers, with profits being generated and brought back to Rome to be spent on other projects. The expansion and conquest was only made possible by the invention of roads throughout the empire. They were usually sponsored by a conquering consul or other important official with enough money which helped gain them power back in Rome. The roads were primarily made for swift transportation of the Roman legions but would also help to grow the Roman Empire. A well-designed Roman road was usually straight and would be fitted with its own system of drainage ditches that would permit travel at a quick pace during all kinds of weather. The main Roman roads that led from Rome to neighbouring cities were built upon a base of rock which was constructed from a large ditch dug into the ground. This was useful because the Roman engineers discovered if the ground became waterlogged, the rock cover helped prevent anyone travelling on the road from sinking into the mud like quicksand. This discovery was also widely used in Rome itself, and it's clear to see if you travel to Rome today. The roads were also opened up to all manner of traveller, including businessmen, government magistrates travelling from city to city, students journeying to Greece to learn from the best minds in the ancient world, and imperial postmen carrying wax tablets and letters. Travel for pleasure and long journeys by foot were not normal practices in Roman society. And if you did, 
you were likely to lose your head to bandits. Rich Romans such as senators often travelled in luxurious carriages which were carried by slaves and escorted by Roman soldiers or bodyguards. Military generals would ride on horseback and the Roman legions would walk carrying heavy loads of weapons and equipment. Engineers would construct fortified camps where they could stay overnight if needed. The roads allowed the Roman legions to travel as far as 25 miles per day and communication was very quick. At each mile of road, a stone marker and sign was placed to inform the travellers of the distance to their destination. The Romans would eventually construct more than 400,000 kilometres of roads, including nearly 90,000 kilometres of paved roads. When Rome reached the height of its power, around 30 great military main roads started from Rome and continued to places like Britain and Africa. Because of this great feat, you may have heard of the saying, all roads lead to Rome. Roman engineers also made it possible for the legions to travel almost as efficiently by sea as by road. Although the Romans usually travelled by sea to towns on the coast, as it was far safer, roads were often patrolled by bandits and outlaws, and if there wasn't a Roman legion nearby, the merchants would frequently be killed and their goods stolen. Unlike the Greeks or the Carthaginians, the Romans were not traditionally seafaring people. They were mostly land-based, who learnt to build military and merchant ships from the peoples that they conquered. Sailing the seas was even considered un-Roman, and the Roman navy was never considered a real part of the military. Roman engineers would nevertheless build extremely reliable war and merchant ships, and that method is still being used today to build modern ships. Warships were built to be lightweight, which made them very fast and manoeuvrable. They had a heavy spike, usually made of bronze, that was used to pierce or break the oars of enemy ships. They used both wind and oar power, manned by many sailors to travel the seas. The merchant ship's main purpose was to transport lots of cargo over long distances. Merchant ships transported farm goods such as olive oil from Greece, grain from the Nile River in Egypt, and raw materials such as marble, granite and metals. Unlike warships, merchant ships did not have to be fast or very manoeuvrable. One interesting fact is that following the collapse of the Roman Empire, we have to wait another thousand years during the medieval period to see ships again that would match that of the Roman merchant ships. Hopefully today you have enjoyed this episode and learnt something new. If you like this podcast, be sure to subscribe so you never miss another episode. Tune in next time with your host, me, Matthew Brooks, for more time travelling. Thanks a lot for listening and have a great day. What ho, fancy friends, and welcome to the adventures of me, Jeffrey Moncler, and my faithful winged feather Ed steed, Monsieur Simon. Join us as we traverse the realms of existence, discover ourselves and others, and have adventure! Ah! The Gigantic Adventures of Jeff and Simon is a family-friendly adventure on the family-friendly Podicon Go Network.